while concepts like yin and yang, the dual nature of the universe, and the idea of polarity are well known. There exists a subtler force that serves to connect and harmonize the opposing aspects. Without this third force, the universe would collapse. Frequently, we find ourselves trapped in duality, swinging between extremes, embracing one and rejecting the other. However, by transcending this duality and uniting polarities, we open the door to a different reality, one that is not defined by our position, but by a choice free from limitations. This is the threshold to the realm of wholeness. In the physical world, every manifestation requires the conjunction of three essential elements. Think of it as being in a movie theater. First, there is the film, housing the images, symbolizing imagination. Then we have the screen, where these images come to life and become visible, representing the physical world. To make all this possible, the projector comes into play, embodying the forces of desire, impulse, purpose, and action. It is the conjunction of this triad that shapes everything. The universe is a system we can describe as ternary, as it requires a minimum of three parts for its conception. It's impossible to form a geometric figure with only two vertices and edges. The most basic geometric figure is the triangle, which requires a minimum of three elements. The space we occupy also consists of three dimensions, similar to how states of matter like liquid represent a convergence between solid and gaseous states. Atoms themselves are divided into three types of particles. The electron with a negative charge, the proton with a positive charge, and the neutron that balances the other two. The spectrum of light and its primary colors is also based on three elements, red, blue, green. The symbolism of the number three is intimately related to the so-called law of the triangle extensively studied in Rosicrucian and Hermetic schools. This universal law postulates that every effect has a cause that always involves two conditions, an active and positive nature and a passive and negative one. When these two conditions come together, they generate an effect. In other words, it postulates the existence of two fundamental forces, one of impulse, the active principle, Yang or Shiva which directs energy, and one of resistance, the passive principle, Yin or Shakti, which executes it. Their interaction produces a third condition involving movement. This process is called trielectric, and that's why initiatory traditions have consistently regarded the number three as the foundational principle of the universe. In the equilateral triangle, the pyramid, we discover complete harmony, a geometric symbol embodying the harmonious convergence of opposites and the union of opposing coincidences. This three-pointed triangle stands as a symbol of perfect creation. It means that all cosmic events, both physical and metaphysical, are subject to this law of the triangle that governs all manifestations. Therefore, no perfect manifestation can occur unless these two poles, which generate a third when combined, are present. This third condition contains the qualities of the first two, but constitutes a distinct reality. This concept is well explained in the Kybalion, where two important postulates are presented. The principle of polarity, which states that everything is dual, everything has two poles, everything has its pair of opposites. The same principle applies to emotional and mental planes. Love and hate are often considered diametrically opposed, completely different and irreconcilable. By applying the principle of polarity, we discover that there is no absolute love or absolute hate. There are many degrees of love and hate, and there is a midpoint where they seamlessly meld to the point of becoming indistinguishable. To create matter, both positive and negative elements are necessary. In the physical realm, upon closer examination, we realize that heat and cold are of the same nature, 
differing only in degrees. Similarly, terms like up and down are just poles of the same aspect, just as east and west, light and darkness, orient and occident, big and small, noise and silence. One exists because the other exists. They mutually give meaning to each other and together form a reality that transcends their individual manifestations. The principle of gender, on the other hand, precisely emphasizes the existence of this third condition, stating that gender exists everywhere. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. The human being, as a microcosmic entity reflecting the macrocosm, possesses a dual nature, material and spiritual, making them a being of two worlds. However, in their manifestation and everyday experience, this duality becomes something more complex, revealing a trinity in their nature. In this trinity, a crucial third condition emerges, known as the anima or soul. The soul is not only an entity that animates and gives life to the individual, it also plays a fundamental role as a bridge that connects and harmonizes the two energies that might initially seem antagonistic, the material and the spiritual. The soul acts as a link that enables the human being to integrate these two facets of their existence and find a balance between them. The harmony of these two realities and the virtuous union of these two points into a third represent completeness balance, and the fulfillment of our potential. The concept of the Holy Trinity, as well as other triadic representations found in various Eastern and Western religions, is a direct consequence of this law of the triangle. It is often expressed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or in the words of the philosopher Hegel as thesis, antithesis, and synthesis, or in Hinduism as the divine triad of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva with its feminine counterpart in the Tridevi. Consider the human brain as an example of this law. It has two hemispheres, one logical and action-oriented, masculine, and the other creative and emotional, feminine. Implementing the law of gender involves taking deliberate action toward your goals at times, and at other times visualizing, feeling, and attracting opportunities. By combining these two approaches, you generate something new. To illustrate, just as nature needs both the feminine energy represented by the flower and the masculine energy symbolized by pollen for fertilization to occur, our world and our sense of accomplishment depend on the balance between these energies in various situations. This balance in our lives reflects a broader spiritual truth. In our universe, opposites exist to balance each other. Joy requires sadness to be appreciated, and order emerges from chaos. Entropy suggests that things naturally tend toward chaos, but we bring order to fully appreciate it. Pairs of opposites exist everywhere. Where we find one thing, we also find its opposite, the two poles. The dual manifestation of reality allows us to transition from one emotional state to another. These states are purely matters of degrees, and by recognizing this fact, one can consciously raise their internal vibrations, change their polarity, and become the master of their thoughts rather than their slave. Therefore, when we define ourselves in one polarity or another, we are always being imprecise and unjust to ourselves. By transcending duality, by unifying polarities, we can experience another reality that is not defined by our position, but by a decision free from limitations. The term non-duality is actually a translation of the Sanskrit word Advaita, which simply means not two, and points to the essential unity, completeness, oneness of life, a wholeness that exists here and now, before any apparent separation. It is a word that signals an intimacy, love beyond words, right at the heart of the experience of the present moment. It is a word that points us back home. And despite the convincing appearance of separation and diversity, there is only one universal essence, one reality. 
Unity is all there is, and we are an integral part of it. That is precisely why we must strive for balance. There is no singular truth. For instance, exclusively embracing indifference or solely pursuing our desires in life is not the ideal path. Instead, we should strive to find balance. It's good to be disciplined and determined, but not to the point of frustration. Chase your dreams, work hard, and then take time to relax and flow. When one of these aspects overwhelms the other, it leads to instability and imbalance in our lives. At that moment, our higher self sends us signals to correct our course and regain that essential balance. You realize there are beautiful and ugly things, those you prefer and those you don't, things that bring you joy and others that restrict or make you uncomfortable. The key is not allowing yourself to be overly consumed by these things and emotions, whether positive or negative. Instead, it's about discovering inner peace and tranquility, independent of external factors. The reality we perceive is neutral. It's our interpretation of this reality that categorizes it as positive or negative. When it comes to understanding the universe, our perspective is influenced by our self-definition as living beings and the position we occupy. The universe itself doesn't possess an inherent absolute positive or negative value. Rather, positive and negative aspects are equivalent and offset each other when they converge. That's why we can characterize the universe as neutral and timeless. We are all beings navigating between polarities. Therefore, the less we categorize ourselves, the more flexibility and freedom we have to adapt to whatever comes our way. True wisdom lies in embracing the neutrality of the universe and skillfully navigating between the two worlds, the spiritual and the material. It's about enjoying moments of happiness while also accepting and embracing our shadows and the challenges life presents. The ideal is not to get anchored on either shore or cling to a single perspective, but rather to become the boat that sails from one shore to another, in perfect harmony with the current of existence, flowing with grace and balance. When you find peace within yourself, everything else appears differently. Of course, you can still seek places, things, and circumstances that resonate with you, but you won't be as easily swayed by fleeting emotions. This allows for more conscious decision-making and a more conscious way of life. And you are amazed. Your life becomes simpler and more straightforward, and you become happier and happier. It happens by itself. And one day the inner master pulls your mind inward to the source and you awaken. You become liberated. You become yourself. Then you are free.